You're with Julian on the brown note. I was just about to start the camera, but I can see it's blinking. Uh, a review of a film that featured at Sundance last January, but uh, got a release, a f reasonable release in July time last year, but I just completely missed it. Uh, an Australian horror film. Now, it's directed by Natalie Erica James, and she was part of the writing crew with Christian Wright and White. And it was produced by some big names. Jake Gyllenhaal is on the list there, and I think also some other big names as well. Uh, Anthony Russo and Joe Russo, who are the people that did Endgame, Marvel's Endgame. Um, so it's had some big backing, and it's only a low-key Australian film, uh, probably costs next to nothing. Really only features three people in the cast, which is Emily Mortimer as Kay, who is Middle Bear, uh, Robin Nevin as Old Bear, and Bella Heathcote as the daughter or granddaughter of the preceding two. Virtually no one else is in the entire film. It's posited as a supernatural horror, uh, scary house movie, um, at the start, Emily Mortimer, the family is shown to be slightly dysfunctional, but not massively, but it's there. Um, the Robin Nevin character has gone missing from this house, and we have been shown forebearings that it's spooky and that there's some legacy from the past in the title, Relic, and so on. And Emily Mortimer's character is caught up in her own life, and uh, she's dragged from Melbourne to this farmstead when her mother goes missing her neighbors haven't seen her for a while she has to kind of admit that she hasn't really spoken to her elderly mother the robin nevin character recently she's kind of a bit coy about that when talking to the police and her and her daughter bella heathcote who's uh it might be a film debut here she's a, another neighbors actress um they go looking for her and they live in this house which gets progressively creepier. There are noises in the walls. Uh, there are foreboardings from like visual shots showing other challenging and disturbing ephemera going on, and and you know other people in this sort of other cabin that's on the property. Um, and then one morning they get up, and this uh, Robin Nevin character, the mother, is there in the kitchen. Her feet are covered in mud. She's been missing for three days. And she just deflects all questions as to where she's been. And obviously this causes a great deal of problems. Um, she's very sort of erratic uh, from that point on. Her moods continually change. She can offer no um, identification as to where she's been. And you're not 100% sure whether that's because she doesn't know or because she's deliberately not telling them about this demonic force that's in the house and there is a demonic force in the house it's just not what you're led to believe uh there might be a little bit of spoiling going on in this film uh as the film progresses the um the supernatural elements start rising things become more and more upsetting um the the daughter and the granddaughter become um sucked into this world this nightmarish existence where Oh, it's a it's tiny, tiny sort of hereditary vibe going on um, if they were all in the one house. And events start escalating. The Robin Nevin grandmother character becomes occasionally violent um, and difficult to deal with. And um, all of that will be progressing to a kind of denouement that you expect. This film is probably the only horror movie I can think of that made me cry. Um, it is an astonishing work of art. It is a beautiful film. I cannot speak more highly of the debut director, Natalie Erica James, who does everything right. It would have been a good horror film had they stuck to that stock template of, you know, these, these, this family becoming more and more uh, persecuted inside this haunted house and this demonic force appearing. But the demonic force in this film was Alzheimer's. And this is a film about a declining parent. And the horror and the demon is age. And um, everything we see in this film is metaphorically related to watching a parent decline. And it is overwhelmingly powerful. 
Um, it actually made me cry by the end. It is such a powerful film. She handles the direction and the building tension in a normal horror film beautifully. She does the whole thing really well. The characters are really well balanced. Uh, Robin Nevin as the elder woman is uh, possibly a wars worthy in her role. Emily Morton is perfectly good. And so is the new, new one, the um, Bella Heathcote from Neighbours. They're all excellent. And they all inhabit their roles perfectly. There's lots of um, foreshadowing of the family's problems, the um, the different generational problems that normal families have, the problem between Emily Mortimer and her daughter, not being happy about how her life's progressing, the antagonism between Emily Mortimer and her mother. Um, and it 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 is ju- it is ultimately about looking after your parents when they're dying or when they're declining to a point where it becomes this monster, the most monstrous thing you've ever encountered in your life, where you don't recognise them, where they're challenging you with their own mortality and they're dying right in front of you and it's obviously that's you and that's what's coming to you and where they're difficult and where they're changing and where they don't know what's happening to them and where that's having an effect on their personality uh, uh, this is specifically, it seems, about Alzheimer's, but it could really realistically be about just declining, declining health from the point where you are no longer yourself until the point where you pass away and how families look after those people. So I'm sorry if I'm spoiling uh, a part of that film. I don't think I am. I think if you watch it, it's got some really thrillingly scary stuff happening in it. And I don't think that spoils it. Um, but it is basically what the whole film's about. Um, if Hereditary won because it didn't go down that road, it actually went full-blown into the supernatural in a way that was much more unexpected and much more um, overwhelming than than I expected that to be because a lot of those films back off where you're not quite sure whether it's supernatural or whatever, and that went just hell for leather. This one uses, it fuses the two worlds. It does the horror thing really well, and it's, uh, for a low-key, low-budget film, you would never know. It builds up that horror side of the film beautifully, and it fuses that with the human horror seamlessly. The two worlds exist, and when it comes to its denouement, it is shattering emotionally. Uh, if you have got a very sick, declining parent whose mental faculties are gone or their body has changed to the point where it terrifies you, it might be too much to watch. It is a very powerful film. I can't speak more highly of it. Um, it is, it is. I thought um, a, a, an optimistic film in the end, and I thought it is a brave film in the subject it tackles. It elicits strong, brave performances. The writing of the screenplay is perfectly weighted, especially even in the. Um, I mean, it gets through the denouement well, but even in the slow build over the first sort of half hour, forty minutes, it does all of that perfectly. And the direction is excellent along that score as well. Uh, It's very, very creepy when it wants to be creepy. And it shows us um, the most terrifying land of all, the most terrifying monster mortality in in confronting ways. And I think this would have probably been my third best film of the year had I reviewed it last year. So I cannot speak more highly of Relic. I think it is a very unique and original film. Australia continues to punch above its weight with low-key films. I've mentioned a lot about their sci-fi and horror films, um, but even going back to um, films like Snowtown and, and American, um, Animal Kingdom, they've always done these films that have really stood out with low budgets and really evocative use of cinema where you never even notice how low-key they are because it's such a, an overwhelming film in the end this obviously is in the horror bracket but it's a social horror film really uh, even though it works on both levels so i'm going to give relic a nine out of ten i think it's a masterpiece and i think it would have been my third favorite film of last year and a just emotionally overwhelming horror film so relic well done uh, Natalie Erica James on your debut film it was a masterpiece 9 out of 10 for Relic